Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Shadow of Kyoshi chapter analysis video. This one's going to be for chapter 25, which is called The Meeting. So this is the last normal chapter in the book. There's still the epilogue after this, but this is where most of the, the plot really sort of comes to an end. In this chapter, uh, it's basically about two things. The first is just the aftermath of Yoon's death. Rangi and Kyoshi, they sort of bury Yoon. We see his sort of gravestone be put in the ground and just the final reflections on what has just happened. Then, Kyoshi is guided by a fox to a location, a spiritual location, where she communicates with Avatar Yang Chen for the first time. So Kyoshi's been waiting for this for a long time to get advice from one of the great avatars known to be successful and well-regarded maybe an avatar like Yang Chen can give Kyoshi the advice that she needs to determine where she is going to go and head what her path as the avatar is and, and that's what this chapter is about that's what the meeting is but there's more to it than that as we'll get into here so we start off, uh, Kyoshi is using earthbending to create um, the engraving on Yoon's gravestone. And she just notes that, like, okay, what information can she put on this? Of course, his name, but he doesn't have a family name because he's a commoner like her. She can't really put his date of death on it here because most people, when they do that on gravestones, are going to use the era of the avatar on it. And that would require Kyoshi to put her own name on Yoon's gravestone and she sort of knows just what, how things ended with him that is not a particularly good thing to do so his gravestone ends up being very sparse not a lot on it it just says Yoon from Makapu the rest of the stone was empty as if it still it could still be filled with an unwritten destiny she buried him on a hill where he could see the village by the waves below and watch the clouds drift overhead in the skies above and so, yeah, Kyoshi and Rangi are left to sort of just talk about this, reflect on the death of their friends and, you know, were they right or not to, to do what they did in a way, Kyoshi specifically. Was I right? Was I right about anything at all? What will they say about me? Avatar Kyoshi, who killed her friend because she couldn't save him. Rangi says, I don't know. I can't tell you anything for certain about the future, only that I'll be there with you. She leaned over, supporting herself on the crutch she'd taken from the infirmary, and kissed Kyoshi on the top of her hair. She then limped down the hill, leaving Kyoshi alone with her memories. And that's the last of Rangi in the whole book. And while it's a nice scene, just because she does say, you know, um, I'll be there with you going into the future, that that's nice. Given that they didn't really show us the resolution to you know Kyoshi going out to kidnap people and her, her implanting Rangi in the ground leaving her crying and stuff like that uh, that happened off screen and then their last scene here just being like okay like very kind of by the numbers I think it's kind of a little bit disappointing for just Rangi right at the end of the book when she was so much like in the focus like in the first like two-thirds of it uh, to just have her really just you know come to an end in the book in such a kind of minor way like again Heron isn't in the rest of the book or anything like that like there's there's no real sense of like they're kind of wrapping a lot of stuff up here particularly this is the the Yoon stuff getting wrapped up and then it's Kyoshi as the avatar getting wrapped up not a lot of the other um, characters really getting focus here which I think is kind of unfortunate and speaks to the slightly rushed nature of some of the stuff right towards the end of the book which I think pretty much only really affects the last few like three or so chapters and um, that's where it really feel like it accelerates and could have used a hundred more pages that the first book had to just include a couple of more chapters here and there to clarify some final things given how detailed the book otherwise is for it to be so vague about some of these final details it's, it's kind of unfortunate um, but yeah, Kyoshi to Yoon, um, his gravestone says, I wish it could have been you, Yoon, it couldn't have, if it couldn't have been me. So it wasn't a lie. So this is very interesting because this is the exact line, basically, that Yoon said to Kyoshi just before they sort of left together to discover who was the avatar. And ultimately it was revealed that Yoon didn't, I suppose, properly mean that. Being the avatar was everything to him. But here Kyoshi truthfully says it you would have been a good avatar. If it wasn't me, it should have been you. And I, I think that's the truth here. It's like how differently would things have been if you actually was the avatar? He was sort of all set up to be sort of 
Karuk done right. The skill, the diplomacy, the talent, everything to be the sort of perfect next avatar. But how wrong that all went. And now Kiyoshi views herself as just being like, what a replacement avatar I am. And, and that's why it's so significant that she's going to get to talk to Yang Chen here to hopefully get the advice from one of the greats. Um, but yeah, th this is where we get it. Um, she heard a chirping sound, perhaps a bird disturbed in its nest. She looked behind her. From a nearby bush, a snout poked out. Its owner emerged into the clearing, a four-legged animal resembling a falcon fox, only without the beak and feathers, furry all over. So this is a fun description of, like, Kyoshi unused to seeing normal animals, and the Avatar world is primarily um, hybrid animals, is like, oh, it looks like a falcon fox when she's describing just a normal fox in front of her. I, I love that sort of, it's funny, but it's it's the way animals are in the Avatar world. That just, it's weird to see a regular animal. Bosco the regular bear is weird. A regular fox is weird also. They note that it has glowing green eyes because it's basically revealed later it's a spirit, so it's not even an animal. This is apparently Kyoshi's animal guide. FC Yi said before this book came out that in this book we would learn who Kyoshi's spirit uh, animal guide was. It, this is the only scene that fits. It's really not that clear. The animal helps her here. This animal is going to be the one to guide Kyoshi to the location where she will communicate with Yang Chen and then guide her back from it. But there's no real clarification that they develop this intense bond that like Aang and Appa, you know, Wan and Mula, Korra and Naga. There's, there's nothing that feels like that between Kyoshi and this, like, fox. And that, like, it, it, there's no clarification that, like, she's going to take this with her. That she gives it a name. That they've bonded so closely. It's just, it helped her in this one instance. And the only reason we, in any way, are leaning in that direction is because FCE said this was going to be in the book. And this is the only thing that fits it. Otherwise... I'd never have interpreted this scene as being like, oh, Kyoshi Animal Guide confirmed here, it's a fox, but this is the only thing that fits. It's, it's really, really weird and vague. Um, just, again, highlighting some of the stuff right towards the end of the book, not fully coming together. Um, but anyway, the, the fox guides her, um, it says here, um, it followed the fox through the woods, over the edges of the hills, down and up ravines. There was no trail and she nearly fell off several times. Slippery stones, bridges of rotting logs, and it eventually leads her to this uh, clearing. They come through, there's a spring in the clearing, there's a water bubbling up from the earth, um, stones all around it. It's a pretty nice location. It was beautiful on the slope of a mountain. Um, and this is, Kyoshi, this is Kyoshi's understanding of what's happening here. Kurok had sent the fox to guide her to a spiritual site so they could communicate. Her connection to the water avatar, as it had been made obvious, was strongest near his native element. So she sits down, meditates, and because she's good at meditating, she immediately makes the connection. She thinks it's going to be Kurok and like, oh, were you, did you like swim in this water? Am I going to get to see a vision of you swimming in this? Because that seems to be the way this works. And she's like, I don't want to relive memories of you swimming in this pool. And a woman's voice replies and says, sure. <laughs> um, very confused. And Kyoshi turns around, gets a look at who she's communicating with. And she's like, no, 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 no. Her heart pounding. She wasn't ready. She wasn't ready to see her mother's ghost. What kind of cruel trick of death was being played on her? How had Jasa of the Eastern Air Temple come back to haunt her? You're, you're not here. You're supposed to be dead. And it's Yang Chen, of course. And she's like, uh, I know, Kyoshi, who do you think I am? Now, in the description here, they do clarify that Kyoshi's not crazy here. She's not just making this like assumption that like every airbender woman looks the exact same. They do specifically note that Yang Chen actually does have some facial features that do look like Jaisa. So she's not crazy here to think that they're similar. And I suppose the other thing here is that I suppose Kyoshi would only have memories of her mother from when she had her tattoos covered with the snake tattoos. So this will be her first sort of look at just, you know, you know, someone who resembles her mother without that stuff, just the normal tattoos. And she just kind of breaks down here. Like she's she's not at all prepared for this. But after everything that's happened, it's just this she needs this. She needs this sort of 
motherly connection here. And that's what Yang Chen gives her. Um, she's like, you, you look just like her. You look like my mother. Yang Chen was surprised, but being the woman of legendary compassion, she knew exactly what to do. She opened her arms and Kyoshi fell into her embrace. Uh, oh my child, Yang Chen murmured, despite what they just established to the contrary. She hugged Kyoshi to her chest and stroked her hair. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry I wasn't there for you before, but I'm here now. Everything is going to be alright. So, they don't really go into it anything any more than that with regards to like, why are they bringing up Kyoshi's mother here specifically? It's just, I think, meant to be after what Kyoshi has just gone through, having to kill her friend, like having to bury him just there. And um, seeing Yang Chen just brings out these emotions because she looks like her mother and she just has this moment where we realize she's still only 17 and she just has that moment of right then where she needs someone to hold her and it is Yang Chen who is compassionate and can see what's going on here and she gives Kyoshi what she needs. But as we, we cut to, of course, the next scene, okay, Kyoshi's kind of calmed down I have so many questions. You're the first person I've been able to talk to about being a proper avatar. And Yang Chen's like, hmm? Uh, Kurok was not able to guide you? Uh, you shouldn't be able to contact me unless you've spoken to him. Kurok spent his days battling dark spirits. Not, and Kyoshi cuts off before she says, not making any sort of an impact. So Yang Chen realizes where Kyoshi's going. Let me ask you a question, Kyoshi. Have you ever wondered why there were so many angry spirits during Kurok's time? I asked him, but he wouldn't tell me. Did he provoke them? Turn them dark somehow? No, Kyoshi. I did. And this is the best thing in this chapter. The sort of demystifying both of Kurok from the last chapter, but also here, and the demystifying of Yang Chen. Because that's what the first book and the first section of this book did completely. They said two things about these avatars. Kurok is the worst avatar because he didn't do anything, he was inactive, Kyoshi hates him and is sort of justified in hating him. Kyoshi is also justified in really liking and wanting to communicate with Yang Chen because everyone in the world views her as being one of the best avatars of all time. She brought peace, she's this, she's this, that and the other and is amazing. But Yang Chen herself just admits that uh, no. What happened with Kurok was my fault, at least to a degree. And um, that the struggles Kurok faced in his life, I set that up inadvertently for him. And that Yang Chen has her mistakes too. Her things that she regrets. And in this case, it's that she regrets that her handling of things created the situation that caused Kurok's life to be the way it was. Um, so, so interesting. She says, I tried my best to, to nurture human growth in the Four Nations. When people inevitably butted heads against the spirits, I sided with humans more often than not. The heart walker of Yaoping Mountain. The phoenix eels living under in the underground caverns of Ma'inka. General Old Iron. Many spirits came to me with complaints of human transgressions against their territories. I told them they should leave the physical world alone and trust their lands and waters would be respected by humans living nearby. And I trusted those humans to respect the balance of their surroundings. Some people upheld their ends of the bargain, many more did not. So I really, really like that because we directly saw those two things. The, the heart walker of Yaoping Mountain, that was the first spirit attack that he faced. They clearly said it was Yao Ping. The second one was Fire Nation related, and it was defending against the the, the things with like beaks and stuff like that at Ma Inca, and that's the uh, the Phoenix Eels living there. General Old Iron, of course, is covered in the comic series The Rift, uh, which was our first insight into the idea that Yang Chen is not this perfect avatar. That the her, her legacy of her deal with Old Iron and how to satiate him came undone over the years because of course when she died there was no guarantee that the knowledge of that sort of you know ritual that festival in that case to you know satiate the spirit constantly the the rules of that agreement would always be remembered and so you know Yang Chen's legacy is that she did what she could to stop humans and spirits coming into conflict but she always had to lean towards siding with humans and that's why she sort of has that legacy of like she brought peace to humans but that peace was sort of formed by also creating a rifts that would eventually come undone during the eras after her death and Kurok faces them 
otherwise, if Kurok wasn't there to face them, the world would have been massacred by these constant spirit attacks that Yang Chen inadvertently caused. It's it's a really interesting kind of chain reaction of things, um, but we'll talk about that, I suppose, as, as we get towards the end of the chapter. Um, Kiyoshi, every avatar makes mistakes, and I was fairly consistent in mine. When humans violated the promises I made on their behalf too many times, the spirits turned dark and wrathful. But those were the ones uh, those were the ones Kurok was forced to hunt down. But none of that was your fault, is Kiyoshi's response. And Yang Chen, of course, disagrees with this. I gave each nation everything it wanted, but only realized my error too late. People shouldn't have everything they want. No one is entitled to their every desire. To live in balance, we must willingly decide not to take all that we can from the world and from others. My choices ultimately led to Karuk's suffering. The poor boy thought it was his duty to maintain my legacy and reputation. So he did it alone, without sharing his burden. I might have done things differently had I known how much pain I'd be causing my successor. And she just notes after saying this to Kiyoshi, you can see the look in Kiyoshi's face, I can sense you're a little disappointed. And I suppose Kiyoshi is just like, like this was what she was hoping to solve all of her problems, was Yang Chen would give her the solution and the wise words of how to be a good and well-respected avatar. How can Kiyoshi sort of heal her reputation? What does she need to do going forward? But Yang Chen is just pointing out that I am not the person you think I am. I don't have these straight up like wor words of wisdom to just solve all of your problems nor should you seek them and that's what she says next um uh, let this be my first piece of advice to you kiyoshi uh, there's a thousand generations of past lives in the avatar cycle you could spend a thousand years talking to us and you still wouldn't know how best to guide the world this is what you must forego kiyoshi the easy answers you must give up your desire for someone to tell you your choices were correct in the end i don't fully understand but and yang chan finishes for her you'll keep trying anyway that's the spirit kiyoshi uh, one more thing you broke one of the sacred air temple relics a clay turtle See that you replace it. There's only one more lifetime after yours before it's needed again. And Yang Chen vanishes at this point. So really nice stuff there of just kind of pointing out to Kyoshi that this is what she was setting up the entire time. Kyoshi would get her sort of get out of jail free card by Yang Chen would give her the advice that she would need to guide her on the right path. But Yang Chen just says, no, that, that's not it. There's no easy answers to this at all. You can't have someone come in and just be like, yes, you were correct in everything that you did. You're going to make mistakes. Everyone has, even I have. And you have to accept that and use the wisdom of the fact that across all the avatars, thousands of years, we've all made mistakes and it's fine for you to make them too. Um, and so on. It's just, it, it's nice in that she doesn't really have like wisdom as such for her outside of you know, we will help you if we can. But some things you just have to, to you know, trust yourself in. And that's what, you know, Kyoshi realizes. Um, yeah, Kyoshi wondered if the encounter had changed her somehow. She couldn't detect a difference within herself, um, but maybe one would become clearer with time. She remembered what Nyatha said to her over a flickering light. Our fire was never the same fire. Kyoshi wasn't the same avatar as Karuk or Yang Chen. She wasn't even the same avatar she'd been a day ago. And it's just this moment of like what she takes from this is just that she can she can be different. She can change as the avatar. That her reputation is not just set in stone with one incident or one event. If she does something even greater going forward, she can be remembered for that as, as well. Um, is kind of one interpretation of it, I suppose. But yeah, I, I like the reference there, you know, referencing all the way back to relatively early in the first book of Kiyoshi broke the turtle and now she needs to replace it because Aang is going to need to get that turtle to be found out as the avatar in his era uh, and I love that a, a reference to ATLA in the book of just directly Yang Chen gives Kiyoshi the advice remake the, the clay turtle give it back to the air, air nomads because they will need it not in the next life, but the one after that, because it's an air nomad again. Really, really solid stuff. The, the other symbolic part of that is, of course, um, how did Kelsong and Kyoshi meet? It was with her doing the test and choosing 
the clay turtle. So there's a significance to it on that front as well of just her remaking that thing that is sort of symbolic of her relationship with Kelsong and being advised to do it by Yang Chen who sort of looks like her mother, you know, her sort of <laughs> uh, parent figures in all of this going on. So pretty interesting stuff. But yeah, um, the, the fox is still waiting there when she kind of comes back and it's like, you're a spirit, aren't you? Well, if you're going to stick around, do you think you can guide me back to my friends? Um, so, you know, th this is why it's sort of unclear. Like, it, it guides her back up, and then they just kind of cut away. The, the, the chapter pretty much ends at this point. I like the last paragraph, but it's not about the, the spirit fox. She still had to be careful not to lose her balance and fall. Kyoshi kept her eyes focused on her difficult path, sometimes stumbling, but making sure to catch herself, taking one step at a time. And obviously, that's describing her physical path up the mountain to get back to where she was but it's also um, a metaphor for her path as the avatar as well this is what she takes going forward is that it's going to be tough but she has to take it one step at a time she's going to have stumbles mistakes will be made all along the way but she's going to catch herself there'll be people around her to help um, as long as she tries it, it, it can be something um, as for the the spirit, uh, the animal guide thing, look, it's not really clear. There, there's no particular connection really established here. And they confuse it like multiple times here by like saying, well, it's a spirit. It's not actually a, a physical animal, it's a spirit. And it's like, is that okay? Like, can Kyoshi just like have an animal guide be a spirit? Is that what they're trying to say here? Because it's clearly meant to be, I suppose, one of the knowledge seekers that you know, they're the only other time we've seen foxes in Avatar, and their spirits too. Um, what's going on here? And then the suggestion that like Karuk guided guided it to her is kind of weird because obviously it's it's more of a speculation on Kyoshi's part. I don't think it's confirmed. Kyoshi's just like, ah, oh, of course, Karuk had this guide me to it. But um, yeah, it, it's one of those things where look, if FCE did not say in marketing material. That this book would reveal who Kyoshi's animal guide was, what animal it was. I don't think any fans would have interpreted it as it's this fox. That's how unclear this is because they, they don't establish really any sort of emotional connection between this fox. Like, okay, it licks her hand, but she doesn't name it. She doesn't clarify that after it's done guiding her back to where she f was before she came down here, that she's going to, you know, stick with it and she's going to take it along with her. That's what they should have done to make it clear and really clarify the full extent of what they were going for here. As it is, as it reads, the only reason it reads as it's Kyoshi's animal guide is because FCE told us to assume it's her animal guide. And it's the only scene in the whole book that could possibly be a Kyoshi animal guide scene because the only other animal she really interacts with in the book is... Um, uh, Ying Yang, and that's Jimpa's bison, and it's of course not going to be Kyoshi's, so it has to be this fox, but it's a spirit, so it's not even a normal animal, and, uh, and again, that, that comes down to, a, I suppose, a technicality of like, oh, is it meant to be a unique thing where Kyoshi is potentially one of the first avatars to have a spirit animal be her animal guide? But again, make it clearer. Why are you being so vague right at the end of this book, right at the end of this series? If that is meant to be a reveal, reveal it. Don't just leave it vague like that. I've already seen a lot of reaction to that scene. And like like everyone, most people are like, this is the only thing it could be, but it's not really clear, is it? So that's that. Um, but yeah, th this is the chapter that fully brings into play this whole idea of Every avatar makes mistakes, and especially with this book and what we learned about Karuk, especially pointing out the idea of the mistakes one avatar makes sort of end, ending up creating a conflict for the avatar after them. And you can track this pretty much down the whole line. Um, obviously, it's difficult to connect like Wan to like Zito and stuff like that because there's such a gap between them. But if we start with Zito, uh, what was presented about him, the bureaucrat avatar who got a position in the Fire Nation government and, you know, obviously stopped a Fire Nation civil war, the country from falling apart. But notice that they don't really talk about anything else with um, Zito and the other nations. So 
Zito, during his era, was maybe overly Fire Nation focused, just on his own nation, and maybe wasn't active enough with the rest of the world, especially because he was part of the Fire Nation government. So when Yang Chen's era comes around after Zito, she has to deal with potentially more of um, diplomatic issues between the nations. Because uh, it was said in the first book that Yang Chen was the one to create a lot of the treaties between um, the different nations uh, to create more peace between the nations in the world at that point. So Yang Chen counters the previous avatar being very, very one nation focused by being very focused on all the other nations. But her failing is in terms of how she dealt with the spirits. She created all these deals with them, but maybe didn't make these deals clear enough or have enough confidence that they would be kept going forward. Uh, the most clear example of that, of course, is the Rift and General Old Iron and the whole Yang Chen festival. Don't ever build on this land. This land is going to be where Old Iron has put his armor down. It is sacred because that is what he has done. That is part of the agreement. And of course, over the years, the festival becomes forgotten, mainly because the Ernoma genocide, of course. Um, factory gets built on it and this enrages old iron and the promise gets broken so sort of her her weakness was probably just that the negotiations always had to be these sort of like very spirit focused um promises that not all humans were likely to keep and while you can't overly blame yang chen for it she always had to settle a lot of these disputes with more or less the idea of can you please leave the physical world and stay in the spirit world and we'll do our best to keep things okay here, please spirit? And they reluctantly sort of agreed. Um, obviously it, it has to delve into the whole idea of okay, okay, what is the overall franchise trying to lean towards with regards to what is true peace between humans and spirits? Because of course we know the worlds were separate initially, so the physical world is the world of, of humans and, and physical animals and stuff like that. So why are spirits? Why why do spirits have to be so respected in the um, physical world necessarily? Is is the sort of like issue as such, and uh, it feels it still feels very much like you have to respect the spirits, but no one ever says anything with regards to the spirits have to respect humans. And that's always been the sort of uh, one-sidedness of that dispute. So it's why, I, even though they, they clarify that, you know, like, it was a mistake of Yang Chen's, it's why I, I can't ever be particularly critical of her, just because I don't think many or any avatars will be able to properly make those uh, disputes, you know, uh, fix those disputes. Like, even Korra is struggling with that in the present. But anyway, she ended up creating these situations where... These promises would be broken, spirits would go dark, and now there are violent dark spirits to be dealt with. And that is what Karuk has to deal with. And he focuses his whole life on facing these powerful spirits and damages himself, body and spirit, to make that happen. In the process, not focusing on the rest of the world, allowing the Dao Fei, pirates, and that sort of stuff to rise up, um, just those sort of disputes. His companions aren't able to handle it, and so Kiyoshi enters her era also having to deal with that stuff. Dao Fei, the issue with, with like clans and stuff like that, bandits coming up again, and um, sort of dirty politics sort of being more of a, a thing that's present in the world. And the, of course, Glowworm as well, sort of being a legacy of uh, Kuruk also. That's what she has to deal with. And obviously, we haven't touched on the epilogue yet, but the idea being that Kiyoshi tries to stop the Fire Nation kind of going bad. And even though she lives as long as she lives, by the time Sozin comes around, the Fire Nation's ambitions are still right there. And Roku suddenly has to deal with that, his own nation, you know, going to war, getting too ambitious, trying to take over other parts of the nations. And then Roku's, you know, inability to stop his friend is what creates the situation for Aang. And then with Aang, of course, um, he accomplishes a lot, but of course the one thing he leaves behind is the legacy of Yakone. And Korra has to deal with his sons and um, Amon and Tarlock in the present day and just that psychic blood bending that's one obvious thing in addition to just you know Ang formed Republic City and now sort of Korra has to 
deal with it in its present state and so on. That that is really well done storytelling of just that that is always pretty much in history going to be the case that an avatar has a big enough effect on the world but they can't be perfect and they always will leave something behind that will affect the next generation of avatar and it's all there present but um we'll talk about that a little bit more in the epilogue chapter but um yeah th th this one is good I, I the emotion of like Kyoshi thinking it's her mother but Yang Chen being very compassionate but then Yang Chen surprising Kyoshi by being like no I made mistakes Kuruk was the way he was and what happened because I created that situation basically and my legacy is maintained because he basically sacrificed his reputation to protect mine. He never told anyone that the spirits were coming because, you know, basically from incidents that I caused. And that's why Yang Chen still is known as she is, and Karuk is sort of still sort of disrespected as she is. And, you know, that's why she's very sympathetic towards him. You know, she calls him like poor boy, and she doesn't agree with him doing what he did to protect her legacy. But she appreciates what he did to protect the world, of course. Um, and, 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 and just the general idea of just there's no easy answers. It, it, despite being a successful avatar who did accomplish a lot, I can't offer you any just one piece of advice that will completely fix things for you going forward, that will give you a goal to strive towards. You just have to acknowledge you will make mistakes, but be able to come back from them, being able to keep going even though you've made them. That's the um, the core of, you know, being the avatar basically, acknowledging those mistakes and going forward. That's what we learned from Escape from the Spirit World, Yang Chen, with Aang asking about, you know, why isn't the avatar all powerful, incapable of making mistakes? It's important to make mistakes so the avatar feels more human and can actually, you know, see the issues with people in that if Kyoshi was just an all-powerful kind of like monster she wouldn't have in the end being able to see the way to get the opening with Yoon was to connect with him emotionally and realize I am what ultimately is causing that pain I took his avatar hood away from him and do what she did and so on and that's the the significance that's being called out here so yeah th they're my thoughts on uh, this chapter in the comments let me know what your thoughts are but that's been the video thanks for watching and bye